in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I wrote down here just for your quick learning three levels of sin with respect with respect to the activity of altars three levels of sin number one personal sin personal sin first John chapter 1 and verse 8 personal sin three levels of sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us period the Bible states it very clearly unmistakable there number two territorial sin territorial sin that means your personal sin you can repent before God but there is territorial sin a territory can sin against God an example Sodom and Gomorrah Genesis 18 from verse 21 Sodom and Gomorrah was not just a personal sin. He appears to Abraham, we are reading to 22, to, to 23. I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crime. In fact, let's start from 20. Let's start from 20. He says, the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin as a territory is very grievous. Uh-huh. I will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come to me if not I will know verse 22 it says and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet with the Lord one last verse and Abraham drew, drew near and said will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked that means in that city they were righteous and wicked people the righteous man being lot yet as far as god was concerned as a territory they were sinners hmm. statistics show sadly that nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations are you corrupt but it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear nationally speaking is that true no matter how righteous you are the whatever lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a Nigerian passport we all corporately no matter how individually righteous we are you have to face that backlash until as a territory we are changed are you getting what I'm saying now Sodom and Gomorrah a territory can sin another example Jonah chapter 1 Nineveh Nineveh Jonah chapter 1 and verse 3 and then we'll go to chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3 Jonah chapter 1 and verse Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against cry against what the city cry against the city for their wickedness is come up before me verse 3 uh, you know what happened to Jonah Jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience and you know that Jonah was angry because he said Lord I know these people you are right if I talk to them now and they repent that means a territory can repent of their sins are we together chapter 3 and verse 1 now Jonah came out of the belly of the fish verse 1 now 3 verse 1 and the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to Nineveh 
that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. That means what I told you. Go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity. And if you don't do anything about it, judgment is coming. What happened? Verse 3. So Jonah arose and went on to Nineveh according to the word of the lord it says now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we're going to be reading what happened because as soon as jonah announced that the bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if i stole money and i bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we're all sinners so the animals fasted it's in your Bible. Praise the Lord. So, there's territorial sin. The last level of sin is sin based on foundations and bloodlines. Please write it down. Don't worry. Don't be afraid of hearing all these words. I know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time. You just trust me. I'm a good pilot. Sin based on foundations and bloodlines. Don't forget these three levels of sin. Personal sin, territorial sin, and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline. Psalms 11 and verse 3. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the... Not what can men do. Even the righteous will be affected. Exodus chapter 34 from verse 6. Exodus 34 and verse 6. Watch this now. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Next verse. Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty it says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh it says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worship next verse it says, Moses now, if I have found grace, we are reading to 14, in your sight, O Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity. Are you seeing Moses repenting and asking the Lord, he said, this one is not just for myself. I, I agree with what, with what you have said. Verse 10. He says, Okay, let's go to verse 9. Watch this. Moses is pleading now on behalf of his people. He says, And pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. How did God respond to that issue? Verse 10, please. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not seen done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the lord for it is a terrible thing that i will do with thee reading to 14 verse 11 now quickly observe thou that observe thou that which i command thee this day behold i will drive out before thee the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hivites the jebusites uh-huh take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest let it be for a snare in the midst of thee verse 13 but ye shall destroy their is that in your bible i want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Last verse. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous. Wow. 
I only used to read that he's a jealous God and he's saying the Lord whose name not negative satanic jealousy let's not confuse what is written here jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about God when he sees that spiritual halotry from God to God and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement i've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance that even the sin of man god did not cast it out of man as powerful as god is he didn't cast sin out of man the lamb had to come and die lived 33 years died to purchase redemption for us is someone following now just like demonic altars all godly altars are powered by one major altar too have i lost you all godly altars are powered by one major altar that means if you see any platform that has been available to men to encounter god to authorize activities of the realm of the spirit there is one major altar that powers them all the bible calls it the throne of grace the throne of grace alongside the blood of jesus that is called the eternal covenant that is the principal altar that powers everything good in the life of the believer please do not forget this every system of authorization every system of exchange every system that allows for interaction with the angelic with the holy spirit every system that commands spiritual virtues to come upon the saints is powered by this one altar the throne of grace hebrews chapter 4 please from verse 4 to 16. if you're following please say amen, amen. 14 i meant to say hebrews 4 14 14 to 16. hebrews 4 14. he says seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god he said let us hold fast our profession 15 now for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like us yet without sin 16 let us therefore come boldly unto that throne of grace he says we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need someone shout hallelujah Hebrews chapter 12, please, from verse 22 to 24. Please write these scriptures down. But ye are come to Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Next verse. To the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect 24 now it says unto jesus hallelujah the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood that he used you see that now the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel you read what paul was teaching that jesus carried his own blood as the high priest and poured it upon that altar once and for all if you ever see any any believer in christ 
walking consistently in favor walking consistently in grace walking consistently in victory having divine encounters those are different altars and platforms that make for that possibility but the one altar that powers it all is the throne of grace that throne you see god sitting on is an altar who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can no one will oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. My God, can you imagine that he sits on an altar? An altar that ensures that what he says, if you believe it and you access it, and you see every other person who has tried to put together an altar will eventually die but there is he that liveth and abideth the throne of grace is an altar it is the throne of grace that powers that altar of prayer the altar of favor every platform that allows you to receive of any spiritual blessing is powered by this one altar the same way every demonic occurrence around families territories and nations is powered principally by the altar of sin and iniquity is someone learning already Hebrews chapter 13 20 and 21 hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant 21 the same way that blood even made a way for jesus christ to return from the dead it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will that means whatever needs to make you go forward there is an altar that insists that the provision is there for you this is very powerful every time you come to Jesus and hand over your life to him more than just receiving of his life you subscribe to the covenant of that altar are we together yes so it does not matter what altars it does not matter what demonic things it does not matter whether my grandfather or great-grandfather whether my region worship idols it does not matter what it is one thing is that the moment you become connected to that one altar that throne of grace through the blood of the eternal covenant how to raise and maintain altars you don't have to cry cuz I have paid the price I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood I plead the blood, the blood, the blood I plead the blood, I plead the blood Eternal saving blood I don't have to cry For you have paid the price one more time. Hey, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead 
the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. For you have paid the price. One minute recap on everything we have said. We said how that an altar is a system of authorization. An altar is a platform that allows the realm of the spirit to interact with the physical realm. And that an altar also allows for laws and spirits to find expression. And that, that an altar is what empowers and activates covenants and keeps them alive. Hallelujah. We did say how that the major assignment of altars is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or demonic and we agreed that you can test the presence of altars in a life a family a business a region through the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether they be negative or positive we discuss how altars work that all demonic altars are powered by one major system of authorization the altar of sin and iniquity and that all godly manifestations you call them altars systems platforms that allow for the victory of the saints they are empowered by this one altar called the throne of grace alongside the blood of the eternal covenant now how to raise and how to maintain altars this also doubles to teach you how to tear down altars every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high every high thing must come down Some of you, by reason of this teaching and the prayers that will follow shortly, you will rewrite the narratives of your families. Believe me when I tell you this, that what they said has not been done. It is with gallancy and victory you will do it. That nobody in your family can rise and you have seen it happen. Now with this knowledge, you will hold it like a key and clear those altars to give you room. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We will sing in honor of you. Can I tell you the truth? Every man you see who has become a champion found a way to put those altars down everybody pastor listen this may be the key you've been looking for why is it that ministry does not work when the altars go down the result will speak you will see it and you will know that victory has come please pray in the spirit in one minute before i teach you how to raise altars those watching make sure you are praying connect from your homes connect from any region behold i show you a mystery in the name of jesus please sit down I'm excited in my spirit right please how to raise altars 
how to tear down altars how to maintain altars now please write today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures or monuments today for the new believer in christ now we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily that means you don't have to go and stand somewhere and start carving things putting blocks together to look for no now that does not mean you cannot dedicate a place say for instance to meet with god like a prayer room or something no that's not what i'm we're not talking that is still scriptural that you can find a place to spend with god but that today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily to know how to erect structures structures that work with power and grace we have to learn from one of the great patriarchs elijah first kings 18. we're going to learn how to erect altars from the man elijah let's start from verse 19 for sake of time this was at a, this was a point of decadence where the purposes of god had suffered a great deal under jezebel and ahab and now this great prophet of god arose called elijah elijah the tishbite and he's about to judge the prophets in the encounter that we know to be the encounter of fire at mount carmel let's read Pay attention as we learn the lesson. Now therefore, he said, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, and so on and so forth. Next verse. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and they gathered the prophets and they came to Mount Carmel. Follow closely now. Elijah came and all the people and said, How long will ye hold between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Next verse. Elijah said unto the people, I even only, you see the mistake? This one is a mistake clearly he made as a prophet. He said, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. 23 let them therefore now watch this he's building an altar now look at the ingredients or the requirements let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire uh-huh and ye call upon the name of your God, and I will call upon the name of the Lord, and the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Both the prophets of Baal and Elijah knew that without altars, any other thing they were trying to do and call would be a total waste of time. Elijah said unto the prophets, it says choose you for yourself and call upon the name of your god put no fire under uh-huh and they took the bullock and then when they had put everything they had dressed it they now began to call oh bell hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon where look at the various skills they were doing but it was on the altar which was made so they made an altar 26 or 27 now and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked 28 and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner did you see that that means there was a way they caught themselves as a last card that when they try everything on that altar and it does not work there is a skill they taught them 
that you can cut yourself and they tried it they lacerated themselves till blood gushed out upon them 29 and it came to pass when the midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded 30 verse 30 and Elijah said unto the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him step number one he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down follow carefully we're looking at the protocol to be able to set up an altar something happened to have given Baal that kind of authority and Elijah now wanting to see the power of God the first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down reading to 39 let's hurry up 31 and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying Israel shall be thy name so he did not just gather stones carelessly the stones were according to the word of the Lord and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a stretch about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed 33 and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and he poured it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood 34 and he said do it a second time and he did it a second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time uh-huh and the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also with water 36 and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Israel let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at thy word 37 hear me O Lord hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that is in the trench and all when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God how to raise an altar pay attention number one the Bible says Elisha repaired Elijah repaired the altar that was broken many people miss this step in raising an altar most people emphasize on other things and forget the place of repentance and brokenness please write it down that is what it means to repair the altar of the Lord that has been broken you want to raise an altar that can authorize spiritual activities again it cannot be without repentance and brokenness please write it down can I tell you whether it is as an individual whether as a family whether as a territory you want to see the power of God come again you want to see the realm of the spirit work in partnership with the purposes of God over the lives of the saints it starts with genuine brokenness and repentance not confession not declaration not prophecy not giving repentance unfortunately and respectfully so most times even men of God when we are teaching people these things we do not teach them the place of repentance and brokenness is someone learning this is very 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 powerful genuine repentance and genuine brokenness remember what Moses did 
as soon as the Lord told him, I mean, um, Moses, when he told him about the judgment coming upon the people, he began to plead for mercy, even for them. Let me show you a scripture. Second Samuel 24. We'll read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 10. The Bible says, And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. So he made a big mistake. Let's go to verse 10. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Watch this now. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have in that which I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Say repentance, say brokenness. We are reading, please continue. 11 now it says for when david was up in the morning the word of the lord came unto the prophet god david seer saying 20 verse 12 now go and say to david thus saith the lord i offer thee three things choose thee one of them that i may do it unto you that means god is saying i'm going to deal with you but i'm going to give you three options verse 13 number one God came to David and told him all of this. Punishment number one. Seven years of famine shall come upon thee in the land. Or will thou flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or, number th or shall there be three days pestilence in the land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. So David, these are the three punishments you are going to receive watch this now 14 david said unto god i am in a great strait let us fall now into the hand of the lord what a wise man for his mercies are great and let me not fall into the hand of man ah. you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man, no, you're not a man, no. you're the God of everything, no you. David is saying, I rather fall into the hands of my creator. I know man. These people will kill me without mercy. Please keep that scripture. Verse 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon israel from the morning even to the time appointed and there died of the people from dan even to beersheba seventy thousand men is that in your bible seventy thousand men seventy thousand men we're going to visit that later on when i talk about the other aspects i'm just showing you that if you want to rebuild the altar of the lord it must first start with genuine repentance the bible says if my people you know we use this scripture all around but we don't even understand what it means nigeria let me tell you sincerely if all our strength and i'm saying this with all due respect and honor if all our strength is on men to change this nation let us think again we have sinned against god as a nation even if you have not seen as a person we have to take responsibility as a nation to say lord from men of god to politicians to business people to those in government to all of us insulting everybody we need to break down and say lord it is only you that can show us mercy and if you do not show us mercy vain is the help of man we need to rebuild the altar of the lord our nation is not the first to be in turmoil go and read about Sodom and Gomorrah they did not repent and judgment came upon them and wiped them how about Nineveh as soon as Nineveh had that from the king to everyone and the animals they came no complaining no self-righteousness Lord we agree 
and Jonah even got angry he said Lord I know you this is why I refuse to go there because I know some of the people these guys killed and I, I'm hoping I will not bring this message so that they, you will punish them for me and now they have repented can I tell you the truth for as long as the altar of sin and iniquity is empowered in this nation in Africa in our homes everywhere we will not be able to see the power and the grace and the glory of God genuine repentance there are fathers who must take responsibility over their families and their children to end certain negative patterns father I come from a family of idol worship now you have given me four five six children I know what I suffered by reason of being there but I stand on behalf of this territory and I take responsibility under God and I plead for mercy don't say it does not matter for as long as there is no mercy nothing stops the judgment of God from landing on anybody and anything are we together hallelujah number two the bible says he set up 12 stones set up 12 stones according to the 12 tribes of israel that talks of covenant and he says he did that according to the word god gave him so you can put in other words the second ingredient that was needed to rebuild that altar is the word of god the promises of god what did he say upon what guarantee are you standing the word of God the promises of God number one brokenness and repentance number two the word of God are you ready for number three there are many other ingredients that were there but that which is an interest to us number three is sacrifice and there are three levels of sacrifice sacrifice so there are three very important things components that were present upon that altar there are others like water and wood that talks about service and all of that but i'm not into all those ones now my concern is repentance and brokenness number two to return back to the place of value and honor to the word of god and then number three to engage the power of sacrifice and i said there are three levels watch this now the first sacrifice that must be put upon the altar is you romans 12 and verse 1 until you become that living sacrifice I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies is that in your Bible a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable act of worship where do you present it on that altar Jesus was teaching and he says when you are going to give your offering and you find out you've offended your brother he says leave it at the altar so that's where you were taking it to You must become that sacrifice yourself. Everything about you and everything about your life. Please look up. I'm showing you how to rebuild altars. And it also doubles as how to tear down altars. If our fathers worship idols, if our grandfathers, if our territories worship idols, it's not enough to just return to the Lord territorially. You as a person must come and say, I make a conscious decision my life and everything belongs to you the second sacrifice that god demands from us in building altars is our praise and our worship our praise and our worship hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 hebrews 13 and 15 it says by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name you want to rebuild an altar that restores all things the sacrifice of praise 
and the sacrifice of worship no wonder Paul and Silas were wise people they didn't sing because they were musicians it was a mystery they didn't care who was listening to them they didn't care about their vocal competence all they were doing was to sing and they created a portal from that prison that touched the heavens and God came down in response do you not notice that this was a formula that was given the nation of Israel? Every time they were fighting a battle and it looked like defeat was imminent, they would keep their swords and begin to sing. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Is it in your Bible? They keep singing it and chanting it and you will see God move like a mighty warrior and begin to bring confusion in the camp of the enemy. Your worship. The third sacrifice is your prayers. This is a major sacrifice that must always be on your altar. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13. The ministry of prayer like sacrifice upon the altar. It says the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall not go out. Prayer. 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 When you see those who practice divination and wizardry and all of that, they are always there making enchantments and making sure that these altars are serviced by sacrifices of prayers to all kinds of deities. The sacrifice of yourself, your life. The sacrifice of your worship and praise. The sacrifice of prayers and then the sacrifice of a seed giving and i'm going to teach you how to use this because many people do not know many people just drop money and I, I i i i submit to you that sometimes even we men of god maybe because it's money just because you are bringing money and dropping it does not mean that you are dropping a seed and a sacrifice i don't care how much there is a consciousness and there is an understanding that must support what you are doing because seeds have different voices in the realm of the spirit Are we together to rebuild an altar number one that altar must be repaired talks of repentance and brokenness number two restoration of the word of the Lord the promises of God you must get back to live by the word of God not to live by the ordinances of tradition not to live over some kind of um, demonic template number three the sacrifice of yourself, the sacrifice of your worship, the sacrifice of your prayers, the sacrifice of your seed. And then the final key to raising an altar is prophetic decrees and blessings. Prophetic decrees and blessings. Now we're going to finish up. We're going to finish up. Um, Give us 1 Kings 18.33, then we'll finish up 2 Samuel. We're about to pray now. Something is going to happen in this place now. 1 Kings 18.33. He said, put the wood in order and then cut the bullock into pieces on the wood and fill the barrels with water and pour it upon the burnt offering. His sacrifice was in place first before he called upon the God of heaven. This is the same thing that happened when Solomon was dedicating the temple also. There was an altar, there was already sacrifice upon it. And then he began to pray and call upon the God of heaven and bless the people. And the cloud of his presence came and filled that place. Second Samuel 24. Let's continue from where we stopped. I think it was from verse, we were at verse 15. Let's finish it now. This is David. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from morning even to the time appointed. And there, dried, there died the people from Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Uh -huh. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was at the threshing place of Arauna, the Jebusite. Uh-huh. 
watch this carefully now and david spake unto the lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said lo i have sinned and i have done wickedly but this sheep what have they done what a good leader let thy hand i pray thee be against me and against my father's house in other words spare these innocent people because of my wrong i have given access and seventy thousand people have died 18. and prophet god came that day to david and said unto him go up rear an altar i want to show you a mystery right now something has authorized satan to destroy this and even though you have confessed and repented that is not enough he said go up rear an altar unto the lord in the threshing floor of arauna the jebusite 19. so david did according to the saying of god and went up as the lord commanded uh-huh we're reading to 25 and arauna looked and saw the king and his servants coming towards him and arauna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face to the ground next verse and arauna said wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant and david said to buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto the lord that the plague may be stayed that the cause may be stayed that the patterns may be stayed that the reoccurrences may be stayed from the people 22 and arauna said unto david let my lord the king take and offer up what seemed good unto him behold here is even oxen for you and here are threshing instruments you know what the guy said i have come to you dear king i respect you i mean it's an honor for you to come you don't need to do anything take the threshing floor take a bullock and even take all the instruments 23. all these things did arauna as the king give unto the king and arauna said unto the king the lord thy god accept thee 24. watch this and the king said unto arauna nay but i will surely buy it of thee at a price neither will i offer bond offerings unto the lord my god of that which does not cost me nothing so david bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver 25 and david built there an altar unto the lord and offered burnt offerings of peace and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from israel please look up let me tell you the truth you can live on earth and fail woefully give your life to christ and in the sweet by and by go to heaven but as far as dominion and authority upon the earth is concerned you will never be able to excel without an altar genesis chapter 8 let me show you something you may have read but not understood verse 20 we're about to pray 8 20 noah built an altar please look up as soon as noah came out there was no place of noah rejoicing and saying ah thank god i survived the flood as soon as he came out the first thing he did was to build an altar unto the lord and he took of every clean beast watch this and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar 21 and the lord smelled a sweet savor and the lord made a proclamation by reason of that i will not again curse the ground for man's sake for the imagination of his heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite any more everything that is living as i have done now look up please he said verse 22 while the earth remains do you know what he's saying seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease to them that understand the altar 
the basis for his speaking was over the man who had raised an altar and he's teaching here that all of these prophetic manifestations revolve around the understanding of an altar the power to restrain evil is captured in the understanding of this system of altars this is very very powerful many preachers do not know this and the only thing you just do is to get up and say God called me God bless you you start a church and find out nothing is happening many business people especially those who come from families where nothing is happening let me tell you the truth whatever you see that is not working right in your life your family your territory the first thing is not to go around understanding the names of demons and all of that that may not be necessary the most important thing is for you to know that there is a principal altar that has powered all the causes all of these infirmities all of these demonic things and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity are we together your first assignment in tearing down altars is to rebuild an altar to the Lord over that family you don't do it by a physical monument it is an understanding and a spiritual approach I told you that an altar can also be a non-material platform Lord I stand this day and in the name of Jesus Christ on this day I am standing to repent on behalf of my family on behalf of all of this do you know that was what Job kept doing for his children read your Bible that was why Satan came even though they were wayward children he offered sacrifices and built an altar for them and nothing could touch them except when God gave Satan permission Satan himself returned and said when I went I met a man fortified by the understanding of an altar and I could not do anything I have seen ordinary people rise to supernatural levels and dimensions because they understood the power of altars preachers individuals there are families that have decided for instance to set up an altar an altar of prayer to say Lord we agree as a family that we are going to pray and by reason of that they now authorize supernatural encounters that keep coming there are people who have set up all kinds of prophetic altars but listen to me the protocol one more time to tear down any altar including the altar that has seemed to destroy everything around your family and lineage believe me when I tell you just assuming it is gone because you are born again personal salvation is not the same as territorial salvation there are rules of engagement are we together there must be genuine repentance I'm saying that because that is what we are going to do this night now genuine repentance for yourself and for everybody who is around your covering and then when that happens the next thing is a committal to live by the Word of God to live by the Word of God not to live by superstition not to run from church and then run to another herbalist and say what is this and uh -uh, uh -uh. committal to live by the Word of God and then number three the sacrifice of your own life that you will live your life for his purposes the sacrifice of your praise and your worship and then the sacrifice of a seed let me talk for a minute about this seed don't be uncomfortable because I'm talking about it let me tell you the truth there have been all kinds of givings in the body of Christ and I salute and I respect it I want to tell you why many people's giving has not produced any result sincerely and I say this with due honor to the body of Christ number one most givings have simply been out of sympathy and whipping out emotions so most of the givings have come like donations and there is a place for that are we together now yes 
there are all kinds of seeds in the realm of the spirit and you can use your sacrifice to perfect the process of erecting an altar that stands against anything that comes to destroy you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline